Okay, so we finished to talk about the uh, liquid fractions triggering. Then um, the next um, evaluation sequence is looking at the consequence of solid liquid fractions, provided that liquid fractions like has triggered uh, in you know or, or like you know you you find out or you based on your relations you, you have determined that uh, your soil layers the sand layer the saturated sand layer that uh, you're working on you would like liquefied when uh, earthquake happens so the next uh, evaluation procedure would be try to estimate the consequences of uh, the uh, hazard and there's two uh, major items uh, uh, which we look at is as the consequence of uh, solid refractions. First is the settlement. The second one is the lateral spreading. So let's talk about the uh, liquid fractions induced settlement first. So uh, before uh, earthquakes, the same uh, particles, you know, they are in contact with each other and then uh, it's saturated, you have all the pore water uh, uh, trapped between the particles and during earthquake, um, the sand, uh, they kind of like uh, uh, being uh, dynamically uh, shake, so you try to reorganize in a, con a more denser uh, configurations and after earthquakes, the, the excess pore pressure, so uh, you know, at, at the time being during earthquakes, the, the water is at under conditions, so preventing there's a change of volumes. So, uh, if it is a truly undrained conditions, that means there's no uh, reductions of volume, which means settlements. But after the earthquakes, uh, now you have the time uh, for the water shoot out, you know, just like you know, the video clip that you have watched. So, now the excess pore pressure uh, they, they shoot up to the ground. And uh, so this part of excess pore pressure will be gone, and end up you will be uh, results in uh, a reductions of uh, volume, which means the uh, because the the volumes where you make of uh, remember the phase diagram, uh, you make of the volume of solid and uh, a volume of water uh, for saturated soils. Now some water is gone, so you, even though like you know uh, you can assume. Uh, there's no sand uh, being escaped the stratum, but since the reduction of the uh, of the water, you still we saw in the reductions of total volumes. So that's that's what like you know uh, ejector formations of liquid fractions ejector happens. So if you have a liquefiable sand, uh, and when you got like a shake during earthquakes, the the water comes out, uh, the water you know. Could be some of the sand comes out too, because uh, uh, if you have very fine grain of sand, uh, the water will carry out, carry the sand with them. But anyways, at the end of the day, uh, you have the sand boils. You know, you have uh, the sand or the water that you 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 you, you can uh, find as evidence of uh, liquefactions has happened, and then also the reductions of volume is another. Uh, evidence that uh, you do have liquefaction happens uh, when earthquakes uh, uh, took place. So uh, the settlements is come from again uh, the uh, the excess pore pressure dissipations. So it depends on you know depends it's a really complicated phenomena is may not be as com com uh, com complicated as the lateral spreading uh, uh, consequences, but if you want to get an accurate uh, estimates estimations of uh, what how much like a uh, reduction of volume would happen, so which means how much settlements uh, could happen because of solid refractions, is not an easy task at all. Uh, it depends on a lot of factors. Uh, the the most important thing thing is the crust thickness, soil strength, and uh, uh, integrity of the soils. And the thickness, uh, second is the thickness of the uh, liquefier material, uh, the relative density of liquefying layers, uh, also the transition zones, so forth and so forth. So the importance go down as so we go down this list. And uh, that's, uh, you know, so this paper right there, uh, maybe I can upload upload some of the recent work here. Uh, the solid refraction settlements uh, is. 
is work as a, a source systems. So uh, the combinations of uh, where you find the liquefiable layer, you know, you could have a liquefiable layers on top of a non liquefiable layers, or like you know, your liquefiable layers is kind of sandwiched with two non liquefiable layers. You know, those don't those matter uh, in terms of induced settlements, and it could be very complicated. So, you know, I, I leave it as a PhD topics here. You know, uh, the goal of this uh, class as a uh, like kind of like a tutor of engineering 101. I try to introduce some like uh, very classics and uh, very like uh, well, well, well used uh, company use like uh, analytical approach on trying to get estimates on on this consequence. So for saturated clean sand, uh, there's a method uh, which is the pioneers, uh, academians to work on this work. So Ishihara and uh, Yoshimi uh, nine. 1990 and 1992 so they have two uh, papers to talk about this and uh this ishihawa work you know is kind of like a classics on how to uh, uh, uh reasonably uh, uh estimate the the consequence settlement consequence based on very conventional analytical approach so this ishihawa he is very famous uh back to the 60s and 70s uh, United States is, is uh, we have heavy seat uh, at Berkeley, and uh, in Japan, you know the Japanese have a very, a very good engineer aircraft engineering too, obviously because they have all the all the very serious like uh, seismic problems. And in Japan at that time, the most famous uh, engineers working in solid refractions or uh, geotech earthquake engineers. So he, he will be like the icons uh, or like, you know, even the father of uh, geotechnical, earthquake geotechnical engineers at Japan uh, is Ishihawa. And I think he's still alive, he's still alive. Uh, and his influence is not just Japan's, the whole like a Pacific uh, regions, you know, the, his, his students is all around the world. Uh, particularly the Pacific uh, regions, and uh, he has very strong influence, uh, even at uh, Australia, country of Australia, and New Zealand, where uh, especially New Zealand they have uh, all the local fractions and also the uh, uh, solar confraction problems. Uh, and anyways, uh, uh, Ishihara at that time was was at the University of Tokyo. So they have uh, quite a bit of good work uh, at UT, University of Tokyo. And he, uh, Hishihawa and, and Yoshimi's, um, they come up with this method, uh, this uh, edging procedure. First, uh, you would divide uh, your deposit into sub-layers. And each sub-layers, uh, you know, which means the liquefiable uh, uh, layers into sub-layers and estimate the uh, relative density. So the, the D sub R here is the relative density, and the M one fifty five. So um, this is you need to understand. So this is relative density. So you need to understand this is a Japanese method. So and uh, in Japan they do things a little bit different than uh, here we do uh, uh, in America. So uh, in, in 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 USA uh, we use M one sixty. And M160 clean sand, you know those corrections. Uh, but in Japan, uh, instead of 60% uh, efficiency of their uh, hammer, so we have remember M160 because uh, most of it, like is we have, we use 60% of uh, uh, efficient ham a donut type of old school hammer. But in Japan, like they find out the efficiency of the hammers, uh, more likely is 55%. So you know they have all these corrections. So M one like a print print is fifty five is equals to about ten percent more. So one point one times the M one sixty clean sand that uh, we're using in the United States. So that's the conversions. So uh, you you estimate the the, uh, the density and also M one fifty. M155 for each of the solid layers, and uh, you will calculate the factor state of each sub layers uh, for solid refractions. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, when we do our uh, examples. And then we we'll estimate the uh, volumetric strength, vertical strength. So, this uh, uh, so typo here, or like you know, this like uh, it should be like a subscript there. 
So this is the uh, volumetric strain, vertical strain. So this is volumetric uh, strain. Actually, volumetric vertical strain. And we can estimate that from figure 10 uh, in Ishihara Yoshimi, uh, Yoshimi 1992. So this is the figure 10. So you know we calculate the factor of safety of each uh, uh, each layers and also we know the density. Uh, we know the M155. So this M1 here is M155. And this is the CPT. So you can either use like a SPT or CPT. So this is the CPT at the typical resistance and this is the M155 and uh, you know your, your the density and also uh, you know the uh, the maximum shear strength so uh, it also depends on this uh, 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 when you fail what kind of maximum shear strength or how much this uh, lateral displacements uh, you have so pretty much Ishihawa uh, his this uh, method is based on a lot of experimental experimental data Data, so that's why, like you know, he can easily measure the uh, shear strain in the lab. Uh, but when when we do that, we need to make some uh, assumptions: uh, how much deformations we're expecting. So as the the lateral deformations is related to the vertical settlements. So uh, you estimate those, and then you know your the combinations of the density and also the SPD flow count. Then for each layers, you, uh, so you know you know the x axis sorry you know the y-axis and you know the contour line then you can read off the x-axis which is the uh, volumetric strain so for each layers like uh, you calculate the volumetric strain and uh, the settlement so it uh, will be equals to uh, kind of like undo the volumetric strain so this is the uh, vertical settlement and this is the thickness of the layer that you're working on. Thickness of liquefiable uh, layers that you're working on. So that is pretty much the SPT method. Uh, despite that, like, uh, you know, they give you the uh, CPT reference. Uh, but like, you know, this method is uh, well, recon well recognized as a SPT method. And next, like uh, Xiang, uh, two thousand two, uh, you produce us uh, like uh, SPT focus method, and you know it's pretty much just based on the uh, philosophy of uh, uh, design philosophy of Ishihara's and uh, uh, method in nineteen ninety two, but pretty much he repays um, many think uh, like now like the x axis is your tip cone resistance and uh, the contour line are the factor of safety so you know what factor of safety uh, you calculate from liquefied uh, liquefactions analysis then you will become the contour lines and then like uh, you know the factor of safety from your triggering evaluations uh, and you know the corresponding uh, typical resistance of CPT then uh, you can read off the uh, post liquefactions vol volumetric strain uh, based on the informations Okay, uh, let's try a quick example here. Um, so, this is uh, a, so, uh, a project site where we have two. Well, we just look at. Well, the first thing to do is always um, remember the three uh, the steps that we need to do. First is the subspecibility of uh, liquid fractions. Uh, so let's let's assume um, like our the two layers, um, the s uh, the city sand layers. This this mean to be SP, not um, not GP, not ground flow, but this assumes this this is a sand layers, and also with a unit weight of uh, sixteen kilo newtons per meter grip. Um, so, let's the first thing is try to like screen through which layers uh, you know, is susceptible to solid confractions, and remember we talk about this. Um, Way before the Bray, uh, the Bray method. 
So here the the uh, the Bray method. Um, so if this is like a ML material, uh, very likely you know uh, we fall in the region that uh, the blue is like a long liquefied, uh, but the red one is the tricky one. And uh, pretty much like a CH and MH material is just not liquefied. And CO materials, again, like uh, uh, depends on the PI and also the liquid limit. So uh, uh, now, like, uh, since we don't, we don't have the elevated inf uh, informations, uh, just like because it's a uh, quick examples. So uh, we kind of like, you know, uh, pass on the ML layer, the suit layer, but uh, in re reality, you know, if this is a true engineering project, then you should, you should like uh, further examine whether this uh, suit layer would be liquefied or not. Is that like susceptible to liqu liquefactions or not? So, you know, it's first is like to, to screen out the soil layers, whether you are uh, susceptible to soil liquefactions. You know, whatever saturated uh, sand uh, soils, you know, is pretty much a must for you to uh, to go on on next steps. But when you have silt layer, uh, very likely, or, it's, or maybe C C L layers, actually for this um, two layers, you, does, you need more work um, to to further uh, you know, determine. Uh, first of all, uh, again by using this Bray uh, Bray method, Bray. Uh, 2006 method. Um, so this is from C. Law, but actually this is uh, the Bray and uh, Sensio 2000, 2006 method. And um, so again, ML and CL, you better look at the PI and uh, the liquid limit. If you are at the blue uh, area, then uh, pretty much like, you know, yes, this it, this is is almost a must you need to do if, if you end up the plasticity index a local limits like uh, give you at the a blue area so this pretty much is like uh, you will have this issue when you when you have ml uh material you almost have like half of the chance that like you know yeah, this is a must and also the dual classifications clml pretty much is a must uh cl material the link clay material uh the most the most chance like uh, you don't need to uh you know it's not susceptible to solid refractions but if, if you end up the uh, plasticity index is so low that uh you go to blue then yes wet you need to be very careful uh you may or may not you need third examinations and you know the if you haven't uh uh get into the red area and if this is very critical you know you may want to even have a, a, another outside expert uh to to examine uh, you know your project well like you know you need more like third advanced like uh analysis okay so that's the first step and the second step um will be uh to do the salt trigger uh the salt triggering uh analysis uh we didn't do examples uh, for the previous sections and i think like in at, at the end uh maybe like uh, i would give you an extra part of this lecture to just like uh, walk you through the uh analysis on uh, triggering trick uh, salt salt liquefaction trick triggering uh, evaluations so uh the uh when you do the triggering uh analysis it will give you the factor of safety uh, and which will be useful so uh, this is a, a, an examples on a on a settlements only consequence only so that's why like you know I give you the factor of safety here now so for you to complete the anal analysis just for this part so again that's three part a subspecibility tri triggering analysis which give you the factor of safety um, and then now, uh, so, you know, after you get a factor of safety, if you get a factor of safety really high, if you get like a, a factor, you know, just like uh, the, the one that you have, uh, just look at the method with the Ishihawa and Shang method, you know, if you have a factor of safety above two, then pretty much, you know, there's, there's no consequence per that method. So you don't need to like worry about uh, uh, you know, estimating consequence. You would say uh, the soil is susceptible to liquefactions, but the loading is small enough that uh, likely the uh, liquefactions won't be triggered. Unless like, you know, because uh, again, like, even though the soil is susceptible to soil liquefactions, it also depends on the amount of loading. 
and also the resort resistance you know you compare the two whether like uh, uh, the loading is strong enough and this all the soil is weak enough uh, uh, for liquefactions to to take place and uh, because of the factor of safety then like uh, you can after you get the sector of safety then you can evaluate the consequence and we have the SPT method so you know those are the SPT uh, data results and also based on the CPT so the loading is the same but like uh, because of different like uh, e uh, a few index so we will have a little bit slightly difference like a uh, triggering uh, uh, evaluation results in terms of the effect of safety so you know you, you see the number is slightly different there okay so we have this we work on this two layers you know despite the fact that we should also look at like uh, the the upper two above it but like now we just uh, since we don't have the other uh, uh, informations uh, for this exercise we just look at the two cents layers so first, uh, if we want to use the Ishihawa method, like you know, we do all the good work to convert to convert the N60 to M160 clean sense uh, using the Seed at all 2003 method, then we can convert that to the M1 uh, values, which is the M155 per the Japanese uh, Ishihawa's like a procedure, which just multiplied it by 1.1. So uh, with that. We know the n values, which is um, uh, one point one, and then we know the factor of safety of liquefactions, and um, we can also estimate the um, the density, the density of the soil. But anyways, like uh, uh, for examples, uh, we are at uh, for the first the uh, SM city sand layer, we have a factor of safety of about one point almost one point two here and then we have a uh, m values of about thirty so twenty five thirty could be here so if we if we like uh, go on go on this curve and then we wait off from there so we have this point and then we go down so we have uh, our post liquefactions volumetric strength is about 0.4 percent so that's get we how we get the uh, settlements uh, for our first terms and we assume all the 1d consolidations uh, or 1d uh, settlements not consolidated this string level uh, multiplied by the thickness so this is the thickness of the layers then this is we the expected settlement due to liquefactions we do the um, the similar uh, procedure for our second layers. So we have a sixteen point three for our M one sixty clean sand. Uh, we change that to M one fifty five, and this is uh, the M values we get. So it's about eighteen. So this is fourteen, and this is twenty. So uh, maybe eighteen is somewhere le uh, near the twenty. So this is the twenty curve. Um, and then we know the corresponding factor of safety for this layer, the SP layer, uh, the sand layers, is uh, is a uh, 0.5. So we have the sector of safety of about 0.5 here. So we have the curve here. So uh, when we when we read off the uh, the graph is about 2.5. So that's why the volumetric string is 2.5. And again, we multiply by the thickness of the layers, then we get the settlement. So this is the estimated settlement uh, due to liquefactions. So the settlement is, uh, we can expect uh, the settlements like a form uh, for this site is about 11.6 centimeters. So similar, we do the same thing for the CPT method. So uh, we uh, we know the uh, the the uh, normalized uh, CPT values. Well, first of all, like you know, uh, there's procedure to change this to Q, uh, QC values to Q, uh, QC uh, one uh, clean sand. So uh, we and this is Mega Pascal. So we change this to uh, to normalize the like uh, uh, kilo Pascal uh, developed by the ATM. So this is uh, changes to kilo pascal and developed by the uh, 101 um, uh, kilo pascal so this is like a one atm 
So we get our normalized uh, cone tip resistance for the um, CT stand, stand is 128. So we know this is about 128. So it's about here. And then like uh, we know the factor of safety uh, for this layers for salt tri uh, liquefaction triggering is about 1.2. Then we know this is where we're looking at and the corresponding uh, volumetric string is right there. It's about 0.3. So we 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 um, calculate the thickness of this like uh, layers, and then we got the um, the expected settlements due to liquefactions. So the same thing here. Uh, we we uh, we convert the cook tip resistance uh, this to be about uh, seventy eight, the normalized one. So we have about seventy eight right here, and also we know the spectral of safety is about. 0.5 and you have some limited strength right there so if you have like an, anything like a less than 0 0.6 0 0.7 you know uh, you know so this has got like a limit so if you're anything like a less than 0 0.6 pretty much you were hitting that curve so here and then you will go we from there it's about like a three percent so we know like the volumetric string is three percent and then times the uh, thickness of your layers we got the expected settlement. So using the CPD method, we have to expect the expected settlement is about 30.2 centimeters. So this is like a very quick, great analytical approach to find the settlements. And, um, and pretty much this is just for fuel, uh, free fuel. So sorry that like, you know, the buildings there is me uh, misleading. You know, uh, this is a uh, free fuel conditions. You know, we didn't look at the effect of the structure uh, we are not considering any like a uh, stopping ground or effect of the structure. This is kind of like a, a free fuel settlements uh, when liquefaction happens. Uh, very quick analytical estimations. Um, if you want, if you really need to uh, uh, get more accurate results and also coupling with maybe like the existing structure, then very, very likely you know you need to have a three D. Uh, finer elements or find a difference model to try to uh, get a better estimations. So another one is the lateral spreading. So uh, for soil liquefactions, um, after soil being liquefied, uh, this is the uh, stress strain response of the soil, and uh, we we used to know that like. Uh, uh, the stress string response is something like that, right? Um, you have some part of hardening, uh, soil hardening response, uh, an axial string increase, but it won't happen for liquefied soils. So, pretty much uh, at the beginning, uh, you have, don't have strength at all because uh, uh, you know the uh, liquid the filament liquefactions is uh, there's the sand particles they are not contacting each other so. Uh, there's no strength, pretty much it's just uh, uh, water. Uh, but like after all the particles are being reorganized and also the settlement occur, and at some point this, the, uh, the sand particles will be locked down with each other again. So they will be uh, in contact and then uh, there will be another phase that like increasing stiffness and at the end of the day like you know you keep dilating because you know it, it has been da uh, densified. So you'll be intensified enough that like uh, uh, the sand particle will just keep dilating uh, when you increase the axial strength. And um, this part will be important because like uh, this pretty much tell you, you know, there's no strength at all. And, and, and this phase is depends on the salt uh, density, confining stress, and uh, also um, the angularity of the particles. And I've done with some research work uh, in this area too, and um, this uh, phase of uh, soil response also depends on uh, the p liquefaction's loading. You know uh, how much loading you, ha what kind of like actual strain that you has experienced, what kind of strain history uh, you has experienced uh, prior to the p liquefaction's loading. So we call you used to call this like post liquefaction's loading, and um, so it's a very complicated. And so, so because the soil don't have strength, so you could expect uh, a large deformations. 
so kind of like a full type of uh, behavior because uh, if you have a landslide, if, if you have uh, uh, initial static stress or sloping ground that the soil is liquefied, you expect a lot of displacements. Uh, it's quite dangerous. And that's some like a procedure to estimate uh, liquefied soil strength. Uh, the seat, so this is the uh, uh, the junior seat and harder 9090. So uh, based on the M160, uh, they have some quick estimations of the residual uh, soil strength. Uh, so <coughs> and this happened at a large displacement. So you could be somewhere here. So when you have you mobilized uh, your know, when you when you uh, mobilize uh, the soils, then you would expect a certain of like a recovery of the strength, and so that is the uh, uh, residual soil strength of liquefied soil, and it's very low. It's very low, uh, and it depends on uh, it's some correlations, and you see a lot of uncertainty too, because very likely you know you you're not so sure your your axial string like all the deformations, so that's why uh, it's string dependence and. Uh, here you don't have this uh, the displacement dimension, so you are dealing with a uh, very high uncertainty. So that's why you 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 know within like a uh, uh, same uh, uh, blow gun, you can see a uh, very high like a uncertain uh, a range of uh, of so of saw string there, and pretty much you know you 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 are just guessing. But if you if you need some like uh, informations. Or some like a uh, numbers to to do your preliminary analysis. You know this this could be a good start. And uh, so this is 1990 and uh, 2012. Uh, it just a Boulang J state make use of uh, more uh, K history data. So you know some of it is from the uh, seed harder 1990 data here, and uh, they have more experimentals or also like a more field data. Uh, they try to draw a curve. Um, um, and again, there's a uh, very high uncertainty, and and they used to be like a uh, conservative uh, when you come to this, because uh, this just very hard to um, to to uh, to deal with for this uh, soil liquid uh, soil liquid phenomenon, not just like a soil behavior. So it's that's like a two phase of material coupling with each other. So when you when you when you like you know deal with this uh, you know those again those a uh, chart over there will be good for um, a preliminary design or quick estimations if you have very like a details a serious design you 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 know the recommendations is like pretty much you need like a three D a finite difference even not finite elements for finite elements only can do a small string when you have like large deformations uh, you need to use a finite difference uh, computation program uh, like flag. Um, which is quite popular, and uh, uh, so so another reason is like uh, flag is very popular in uh, West Coast, uh, especially in California, because it can deal with a, a last stringed uh, uh, scenario, a uh, large deformation scenario uh, after the events of solid liquefactions. So that's more um, empirical uh, approach. Uh, so this yield at all two thousand two. Uh, they try to estimate uh, the the displacements uh, by a lot of other like uh, 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 parameters. So pretty much like you know, you compile a lot of uh, K history and then like uh, you statistic on try to uh, find the correlations. Uh, this is multi-dimensional uh, correlations between the expected uh, displacements. Um, so you have uh, uh, displacements. And also like a so you have a free phrase free phrase conditions and also maybe a gently sloping ground, and uh, the expected like a deformation displacements will be depends on uh, a bunch of different parameters. So this is statistic curve feeding that you use. So it depends on the earthquake magnitudes, the distance, and uh, the thickness of the layers and uh, the fine contents and the grain size. Uh, the height of the free phrase if you have one and also the sloping ground of the soils so this another very handy uh, uh, equations or estimations uh, for you to estimate uh, uh, the consequence of solid refraction uh, in solid refractions for uh, the spread uh, the spread uh, 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 for the lateral spreading 
So <coughs> this is the consequence. Actually, is really complicated, and uh, and and at the end of the day, like you know, when equifactions happens, it's not like uh, either or. You know, you have the both consequence. So just give a picture on when solid liquefactions happens. You know, you have all the spreading and also settlements uh, happening together, and this is really like a mess because uh, you will have liquefied soils uh, in the in the uh, mix with uh, um, uh, liquefied soils, which could be clay. So it's it's really hard to get right, and there's no one uh, magic. A single like empirical model can give you the accurate answer. Um, so at the end of the day, like you know, uh, very likely you will need like a finite uh, difference model to truly capture what happens for your project. Uh, but your preliminary design, you know, uh, you may want to have a quick ballpark estimations with uh, those. Um, you know, you know, chart or those like uh, empirical equations to get you start, and this is from the seed paper, uh, the seed two thousand three paper, which I will upload to our uh, Canfax too. I, um, uh, I like to use the seed paper is because um, the way that like uh, he uh, seed, uh Professor Seed uh, present uh in the uh, liquefaction evaluation procedure, uh is 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 a little bit like uh, easy to read. And for sure, like, you know, uh, this is 20 years ago already. Some of the informations there are outdated. But I, I, I think it's a good start for students to uh, pick up from this paper and, you know, uh, have a, a, a quick, uh, you know, uh, quick introductions or the first introductions on how we engineers do things. And then, like, you know, uh, we understand the basic framework then uh, with uh, you know more experience in the field, then you know like uh, which models do better uh, and more updated, and but just you you can incorporate that back in the framework. So the framework, like you know, we talk about that uh, already. So the first thing is uh, to assessment of likelihood of triggering or in uh, in initiations of uh, solid confractions. So um, this is the triggering, and before that, like uh, we also have the. Uh, Suspectability that uh, you want to look at. So the very first step actually is look at the uh, suspectability. So this is like a step zero. So if the soil is susceptible to soil liquefactions, the first thing you look at, and after that will be uh, to assess the uh, likelihood of uh, triggering or initiations of soil liquefactions. And then you will try to estimate the post liquefaction soil strength, and uh, if your slope, uh, how about the stability of the slope? Um, and then, like you know, you as assess the uh, expected liquefactions, uh, deformations, and displacements, and uh, you assess the consequence of this deformations and displacements. And finally, uh, uh, you will need to work with the contractors uh, whether like you want the improvements. Uh, uh, engineering migrations. Uh, if you expect there will be a lot of like settlements or or, or, or lateral spreading, so the mi migrations of a solid confections hazard. Uh, you know, there's different ways to do it. Uh, whether you want to densify the soils, or like uh, you're doing uh, reinforcements, so geo grid and uh, all those kind of stuff uh, will be nice. And uh, that's a uh, uh, a bunch of different ways to, for ground improvement. You could do like a soil make, mixing, you can do the grouting, you can do compaction grouting, and you do like uh, anchor, uh, micro piles, or even like uh, uh, vibrations, so the viable methods. Uh, and each, each of method, like you know, uh, will be good of different like a uh, scenario, you know, you have, especially if a dam, you wanted a sea page. Uh, uh, you know, design then the grouting method will make sense, 
and if you want to reduce the settlements if your analysis tells you settlement is too much but like a lateral spreading may not be uh, a huge concern then the densifications uh, we will, we will have really good um, so this this more like you know is going to the constructions like a uh, uh, feel and uh, you will work uh, highly uh, with uh, the uh, contractors to 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 make this work and I post a website there that will help you to uh, to visualize some of the method because at the end of the day like you know uh, those uh, contractor they have good informations online so those are some um, some common method here so feel free to go to uh, this website so you will see some of the uh, how some of the grounding or uh, dry soil mixings like uh, to be done uh, in terms of uh, uh, soil improvement for the corrections uh, mitigations. Okay, so for future framework, um, uh, I upload some paper uh, for the next generation liquefactions, which is happening now. So my PhD work also contribute to be part of it. Uh, is like the future framework will be try to incorporate like everything, um, and Stephen Kramer uh, from Washington and also uh, uh, Professor John Stewart uh, from UCLA. They are the driver for the next generation liquefactions project. Uh, actually, is 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 um, most of it is happening at UCLA. And so the way that they do is like you know uh, they they will start from uh, liquefactions like a capacity curve that we know and then like uh, they will use different type of uh, intensity measure to characterize uh, earthquake uh, ground motions or loading events and uh, they will try to find out the the, the time uh, uh, the time uh, domain so they try to bring the time domain of. Uh, of a ground motions, they will from the capacity curve. They will know the exact time or uh, try to estimate the ex exact time of when the refractions will happen for different ground motions, and then they can separate uh, the ground motions. This is kind of like the bureau of the earthquake ground motions. So the intensity measures can be areas intensity, can be uh, a CV, the calf, uh, cumulative absolute velocity. Or any other kinds of uh, IMs values, so we can uh, break break it down into two parts: p liquefactions and pool liquefactions. And after they uh, identify the post liquefactions loading, they will uh, able to estimate uh, what is the consequence of uh, liquefactions. So the next generation liquefactions evalu evaluations procedure will try to combine the uh, the two parts: the tri the triggerings and also the uh, the consequence of liquefactions. There's, there will be something coming up in the future, but I want to give a heads up uh, how the future will look like uh, when it comes to liquefactions evaluations. So. Um, and uh, I think I would try to do one more example uh, for uh, liquefaction evaluation procedure next.